Okay, so second half. Um, I'm, I'm watching my phone, make sure I'm covered in my phone. All right. So um, I'll, not, I'll just go my back, my back to you, I think, from the beginning. Yeah. And then we'll just run through it. You just take your time, relax the bottom of your feet, yeah. and gather first. And with the standing, especially for what we're doing, make the movements larger. Make the up and down movements larger so you can stretch the whole body and relax and sink. And the third time. Okay, come on, come join us, please. Okay, so open up left and right, so 45 degrees. The ankles can be gently touching or close. Take a deep breath and let it all out. Okay. Relax the knees and sink a little bit. And as you breathe in, pick up the hands, commencement. Is for the Tai Chi for health, extended 42 set. As you come down, sink, and sh turn and shift to your right, freeing your left heel. Let it step up and extend, and sink and shift to your left, turn your body a little to the left, and roll your hands down. Let your body turn to the left to free your right leg so it can step up. Shift back to the center, Expand and come back to the center and one open and close. Shift your body to the left and let it turn to the right. Let it turn in the joint until your right foot is free. And pick up your right, tap it in and step back out. Sink and press. Let your body turn to the right as you press and then open to single whip. Shift back to your left. Let your body turn into your left until your right foot is free. And you can tap it in and out from single whip to one saw. As you shift to your right, let your body turn into your right, either left, so it can step in. As you shift to your left, let your body turn into the left hip so your right foot can free and step out. Remember to let your body turn as you shift. Second time. And third time. And feel the fingertips expanding. Come back to center. One open and close. Shift to the right. Let your body turn and fold to the left. So your left foot is free. Step out, sink and press, and turn to the right, open the palms, single whip. Sit back on the right, let your body turn into your right hip. Your left foot can tap in and step out. One saw, three times to the left. Turn into the left hip, so your right foot is free. Turn into the right so your left foot can free. One more step. Look at the back of your palms and look at the horizon. Come back to center. Brushing the knee. Shift to the left foot and turn a little bit into your left hip so your right foot can turn, the body can keep on turning, the right hand up by your ear. Sink into your right, free the left and turn. And then small step with your left, turn and brush your left knee. Face the same way as me, Bon. Okay. Right foot follow steps. Turn to your left so the right foot is free so it can follow step. Palms turn center. Free the right foot and step back. And as you sit back on the right, let your body turn into your right. Your left hand will come forward. Left foot can free and tap in. Left heel out. Turn. So the right hand goes under. Shift forward, parry. 
right hand rising, turn into the left hip so the right foot can step out. Twist step into the right, shift, and turn into the right hip so the left foot can free. Left hand flips over and covers. As you turn into the left, step up, right hand punches over, right foot follow steps, and then back. Shift into the right, free the hands, rolling back. Sink into the right, gather, step up, lift the sternum. Imagine the palms being pulled forward. Right foot follow steps, and then swivel back to the right, to the front. Right foot first, and shift into the right, and turn into the right so the left foot can turn. Open and close. Shift your weight into the right, and fold and turn into the right so the left foot can turn. Left hand up by your left ear. Sit back into the left. Let your body turn a little to the left so your right foot can free. And turn and step. Brush the right knee. Left foot follow step. Hands start to come center. Left foot back. Sit back into the left and turn into the left hip. So the right foot is free. It taps in. And then the right heel comes out and we're going to twist to the right. Left hand under, shift forward and keep on turning into the right hip. Left foot step up, twist step left, right hand under the elbow, shift. Left, so the right foot is free and can step. Right hand covers, turn into the right hip. Left foot follow steps. Sit back, rolling back, sit on the left, turn a little to the left, the so right foot is free, and then turn back to the front, and then step up, lift the sternum, sink into the right, left foot is free for follow step. I'm sorry, right here from the follow step, turn, turn back to the front, one open and close. And just stay right there. I'm going to shift. I need a little bit more room. Okay, we're going to turn it. We're going to turn to the right. right. So shift your weight to the right leg. Sink into the right. So your left foot turn. Left hand up by the ear. Right foot free and turn and brush the right knee. Lift the sternum. Sink into the right. So the left foot is free. Follow step. And then back. S pull the spine to the left. Right foot free. Release the spine. Right hand comes up. Pull the spine to the left. Release the spine. and Pull the palm upwards as you spring back. Step out. Pull the fingers forward. Sink into the right. Left foot follows. Heel down. Left foot back. As you sit back, open the right arm. Bring the right toe up. And pull the fingers to the right. Bring it to your heart. Forward. Left foot follow step. Heel stays up. Turn back to the left. Left foot swivels. Sit on the left. Turn into the left so the right foot swivels. And open and close. And then we're going to do the brush knee on the left side. So shift your weight to the left. Free the right. And turn to the right. So your right foot turns. Right hand up by your ear. Fold into your right. So your left foot is free. And then turn to the left. Left foot. Brush the left knee. Turn into the left. So the right foot is free. And shuffle up. Turn into the left. So the right foot is back. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. From here, okay. yeah, and step back. S sit on the right, left hand comes in, release the spine, and come back to the front. Leisurely tying the coat. Pull the spine to the right, release the spine, and draw the palm up. Step up. Sink into the left. So, right foot follow steps. Right foot back. Expand the left palm. Pull the left toes up. Imagine the fingertips being 
cool to the left in the spiral. It releases, hands by the heart, right foot shuffles up a little bit, and then sink and turn. The right foot turns, and right foot down, and fold into the right. So your left foot turns, open and close. Okay, fist on the elbow. Sink into the right, turn into the right. So left foot is free and can slide back an angle. Hands press out. And then sit back on the left. Let the hands open. The right hand starts to fall. Fold into the left. So you start turning. The right foot can turn. Sit on the right. Left foot is free. Fold and turn into the right until you have fist on the elbow. Left foot is free so it can step up. You shift forward into the left hand, turn into the left, the right hand will punch forward, the right foot will shuffle up, and with all the weight on the left, bring the right hand up, and then keep on turning into the left, so your right foot turns to the left. Okay. So I'm going to face your back, returning to the left, left foot is free, keep on turning until I face your back, brush the left knee. Release the right leg, shuffle, st follow step, sit back on the right, fold into the right, you're starting to turn to the right, left foot is free, left hand is up, and keep on turning until you face my back. We're back to the front, right foot free, brush the right knee, lift the sternum, fold into the right so the left foot is free, sit back on the left, right hand up, right foot free, Turn, turn, quarter turn to the left, sit on the right, fold into the right, so left foot is free, and brush the left knee. Tap the heart and expand the heart energy. Turn to the left so the right foot can shuffle up. Right foot back, leisurely tying the coat. Pull the spine to the right and then release. Pull the spine to the right. And then release, the palm being drawn upwards, tuck the elbow, step up, sink into the left, step back and open, pull the fingertips in the spiral, right leg releases, turn to the right, turn back to the front, right foot then left foot and open and close. Okay, fist on the elbow, right side. So shift to the left foot, turn to the left to free the right foot. Let the right foot slide back. And sit back on the right, away from the hands. And turn to the right so the hands open and the left hand drops down. Sink into the right, so let the left foot turn. We're turning to the right. Shift into the left, fold into the left into a fist on the elbow. Right foot is free, step up, move into the right and turn your waist into the right. The left fist comes out, right foot steps up, all the weight stays on the right. Left hand opens, folds up, repulse monkey, okay. and keep on turning into the right so the, so the left foot turns. I'm gonna face your back, we're turning to the right. Sit all the way back on the left so your right foot is free and fold and turn until I'm facing your back. Brush the right knee, lift the sternum. Fold into the right so the left foot can shuffle up. Sit on the left, fold into the left, turn left. Right foot is free, right hand comes up and turn to the backs. So we're back to the front, you're facing my back. Left foot free, keep on turning. Step, relax, brush the left, right foot free. Sit on the right, left hand up, repulse monkey, left foot free, fold into the right. Sit back on the left, step up right, brush the right knee. Shuffle step, leisurely climb the coat, left foot back. Turn to the left, right hand down, release the spine, right hand up, right toe, pull the spine to the left, 
Release the spine and pull the palm upwards. Tuck the elbow and step up. Fold into the right. Left foot releases. Left foot steps back. Open the right arm. Right toe up and draw the fingers spiral right. Come to the heart and shift forward. Sink into the right so left foot is free and then swivel back to the front. Left foot and then right foot. Open and close. Closing. Breathe in, lift the sternum, relax the bottom of the feet. Slowly release, slowly start to rise. Let everything go. Bring the feet back in, gather. Three times, let all the tension go. Expand and stretch everything up. Imagine something cooling and stretching you and then releasing or something pulling from the top, your fingertips and the top of your head, and then releasing. Bring the palms together to the heart. Gently close your eyes. Take three slow breaths. Relax. Let everything go. Release all the tension in your hips, your face, your feet. Yeah, and let everything go when you're ready. Okay, loosen everything up. Yeah. Okay, so what, what I want to look at um, is this movement where, where we're turning, right? So it, the other week I talked about if you shift to one side, right? If you don't turn your body, right? If you keep your body square, you need a lot more muscle to pick up that leg. And no matter how relaxed the bottom of your feet, you're still too much muscle. But as you shift, your body really wants to turn into that joint. So if you let your body turn into that joint, it's much more relaxed. Right? As you turn back to the front, you want to keep that same tension. So you have to, you have to be bent right but if you try to straighten out and really square yourself and the foot is pointing front and square it's just it takes a lot of muscle to hold that because the body wants to turn okay so when we look at the brush knee right we're um let's see right we come up from here and we want to shuffle step so if your mind is thinking, okay, brush knee and shuffle step, you're not paying attention to here, right? You're not paying attention to what's happening here. But if you think brush knee and then sink into, sink and fold into this, this leg, then the back leg will release. So if I brush knee and I'm holding this posture, right, and I'm not sinking, I'm just holding that posture and I think, oh, that leg has to come up. Then I have to like pull that leg up, right? If I take a big enough step, there's a stretch. And if I release it, yeah, it's going to shuffle up. But if I come here and I relax, I relax into this hip and I let this fold. So I come here and I let it fold. Then that back leg naturally releases, the knees pointing straight. And then I can just pick it up. I can stay there, but if, if I want to step back, I have to make sure, again, I relax this front leg and I fold. So this is my right leg, so I'm going to fold to my right. The left leg releases, then I can step back. So same thing when I step back, right? I'm, here's my form and I'm holding it. But if I allow my body to turn, turn to my left, then my front leg will release from here. Right? So the, the thinking is still going to be form. Right? You still have to know you have to step back and forward in which direction. But to be able to release the leg by itself, when I come here, it's not 
trying to grab everything, all that muscle, so I can free that front leg. Okay? It's, it's coming here and letting the body turn and fold, and then this leg will release. So come up, turn, let the body, let the body turn, past center, then that back leg will release. Right? If you can hold it here, then there's zero. Even though I'm touching down, there's zero. If I put a little bit of weight on the back leg, I have to make sure I turn again so it releases and comes back here. So when I come back, I have to fold and turn, let my body turn, and then the leg can release. So when you look at these movements, if you watch me for the back leg to release, right? if I'm like this, and there's no turn, there's a lot of muscle going on here, right? And you think like, wow, it's so stable. How does he do that so stable? I have to use more muscle than necessary. The way I do it now is I come out for that back leg to release, I let my body turn. See that little turn? Right? If, I, if I'm coming from the side, there's a little turn, right? there's a little fold. If, if I face this way, right, I'm coming here, there's a little turn. So let the body turn into that joint and the back leg will just release and everything will be so much easier. You don't have to use as much muscle. You can save that energy for something else. Right? So um, when we do that last section, right, uh, let's see. So the last section is a lot of, there's a lot of turning, right? a lot of turning, a lot of shifting, right? So we're here. So the left leg has to come back first. So as I sit, I'm going to turn, right? turn into my right hip. So when I turn into my right hip, my left heel releases. Then it, I'm already turned at an angle. So when I slide, my foot naturally slides at an angle. Okay? Then I have to sit we're going to turn this way so i have to sit my weight on the left and then as i turn i naturally start turning my right leg i let my right leg follow and turn and then i just keep on turning until that's 45 then i have to sit back on my left and then i have to fold into my i have to fold and turn into my right leg this time as i sit on my right i'm going to turn to my left so we're facing this way and i just let the left leg follow okay? and then it steps up as i step up i'm going to turn and fold into my left so my right leg's going to free and then it can shuffle up it can step up okay then the next part i have to keep my weight here because i want i'm going we're going to turn to the left right so we're turning to the back so my right foot has to turn 45 which means i have to keep all my weight on the left so i keep on turning into my left to allow my right foot right leg to turn and the my right knee is going to aim at the back of my left knee then i can sit on my right and again i have to keep on turning to my left fold into my right then my left foot is free and then i can step okay then i can execute the brush knee Okay. I want my right leg to shuffle, so I have to turn into my left. So my body turns into the left. My right leg is free. I can shuffle up. Then I'm going to sit on my, my right. And we're going to turn all the way around, 180 to the right. So my left foot has to turn, which means I have to sit into my right hip, turn into my right. So my left foot can follow and turn, turn as much as I can. Okay, with practice, you can turn until the left foot is 45, right? Then I have to sit on my left, relax. My right foot is free. Keep on turning and step and brush my right, brush my right. I mean, I need my left foot to shuffle up. So I have to fold into my right. I have to turn my body to the right, into the right hip. So my left foot can come up. Okay. And then we're going to turn, quarter turn back to the left. So I have to sit back on my left. I have to turn into my, let my body turn into the left. Let my right foot follow until the right foot is 45 and sit on the right. So my left foot is free. Keep on folding and step and then do the last brush, brush knee. Right? If 
I want that foot to follow step, I have to turn some more. Then the right foot can follow step and step back. And then the next sequence, and then leisurely tie the coat. <laughs> but the, the emphasis right now for this se section is as you come up, right, let yourself turn. Just, just turn into this hip joint, right? Then the back leg will be free. And then that back foot, right, it's free. <laughs> so you can shuffle up, you can step back. So it's the practice of sitting, turning. Let your body turn and then the other leg will free. Yeah. It's the same form. But what I realized, really how we learn and how we teach, right? Because we, we teach how, we, how we're taught, right? Is we're taught the form. So the form says, step out left, brush the left knee, right? And it's, which way do I face? Oh, I'm facing front. My focus is front. It doesn't mean my hip has to be square to the front. So even if my body turns, by turning, it allows me to walk straight to the front. But if I'm struggling, right? If I'm struggling to hold my stance and I'm struggling to pick up my leg, that's a lot of resistance, right? So if relax is number one, sung is number one, I, you have to figure out what do you have to do to to reduce or eliminate that resistance. Okay? So if you listen to how the body really works, right? If I come here and I'm totally square, right? Square here, square here. If I'm only looking at at north, at right north, south, east, west, and I'm only on those corners, right? I can do it, but I really have to. Even if I relax, I can feel my my leg muscles really strong, really grabbing. And we get fooled into thinking that's what you want, right? You gotta flex all the muscles, right? When we go to exercise, tighten all the muscles, right? That's all we're taught. That's not wrong, but that's not how you do it for every situation. So application really is you wanna be as relaxed as possible. So we do that to tense the muscles, to build up our muscles, and then we have to learn how to let go, right? So from here, right, if I don't, if I keep myself square, there's a lot of tension or right, I can come out and relax into this joint. Just let my body turn and then my back leg is free. And then the whole leg muscle doesn't tense. You can start to feel it's tensing in certain parts of the leg. So when you stand up, it's more relaxed. But when you go down, you can feel, oh, it's, it's starting to isolate into certain parts. Right? So, so the lesson is when you shift to one side, relax into the hip joint and let this turn, and then the other leg will, will free. Right? When I sit back to center, that's when I double weight. Right? When, my, when my center my balance, my center of gravity is right in the middle, that each side is pulling equally, then I'm square to the front. But as I shift, right, if I don't allow myself to turn, I have to use muscle, right? Because now I'm off center, my body wants to turn. If I turn, then I relax into here and this leg is free. Right? So to do that last part, um, you know, all that twisting, if you don't turn, then it feels really complicated. But if you fold into here, then that foot, the other foot will just naturally turn. And then you sit, right? And then just naturally turn, let it turn, right? Then you're facing this way. I come out, right? I step up, right? If I sit, I'll turn, I'll turn, I'll turn. And then I just keep on turning. You just have to learn to turn all the way right and then i sit back and i'm actually going to turn a little bit to my left so my right foot can free then i can turn back so you have little turns left and right to free the leg and to step yeah so the mindset is allow yourself to turn right allow yourself to turn and fold into that joint right listen to here right and then you can do the form but if you try to do the form 
without listening to how the joints work, then you're going to struggle. Okay? That said, it's making me understand again in, in how we learn and how we teach. Form is also number one. So I have to make sure I teach the form. And then I once you, right, if you don't know the form, it's constantly, no, 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 turn right, left leg, le this way, that way, no, your hands go here, your hands go there, right? So once your form is in the general proper place, then you have to really study, okay, here's how to do it without struggling. And then it's like, oh, wow, it just moves. And it's really interesting because as I'm teaching, a lot of times now I'm just calling out, fold and turn here and then the leg will move in the correct place and fold and turn here and the, the leg will move in the correct place and say see you're able to follow the form right but i'm not teaching them the form so for them to do it by themselves right it's like oh wait what did he do <laughs> so it's I'm, I'm it's a self lesson like going back to teacher training again how do I teach? What's important? What comes first, second, third? Yeah? And it's that spiral approach for there. So you do have to learn the form, right? Where does everything go? Where do you step? Where do the hands go? And such. But this fold, yeah. Learning to fold. Because if you learn to shift and right, you have to think of it like that. Allow your body to turn. And that's different from saying turn. Right? So if you think, okay, turn, it feels some way. But if I say, right, allow your body, relax, just relax all of this and allow your body to turn, right? It's so much more relaxing. You just naturally turn and the movement comes out from there. Okay? All right, what time is it? Okay, the other thing I was showing them, uh, I want to leave you, is, and it's, this is an extension of the idea of something an external force acting on you. So we start off, again, the progression is you have to have your form, right? You have to set your form and then expand your muscles a little bit. So it starts off physical, right? Concrete, have, like, like have your form and, and then flex your muscles, get everything in place, right? have your mechanics, and then internally expand and stretch from inside. But then you want to switch from internally stretching to something else pulling. Okay? So the bottom of the feet, you have suction pulling your feet down. Okay? The top of your head, not just suspended, but it's, there's a light pull on it. Right? So the more you relax, the more you, the more you expand upwards. And the fingertips, right? you expand and stretch the fingertips out, relax all the joints. But then imagine something pulling your fingertips. And all of these can be really intensive, right? Can be high intensity, like just ratcheting, right? Or it can just be just lightly expanded. Right? The main thing is to try and get all the muscles to stretch, all the joints to loosen and open. And they can have all the movements they want. And if we have this constant stretch and pull on all our muscles, that's myofascial massage. So the longer we can gently stretch those muscles and hold them in that stretch, then the greater chance they'll release. So the knots will release, all those blockages will release, and we're running energy through them. So that's myofascial massage for yourself. Okay. So I went back yesterday, uh, the last couple of days, to doing this exercise. And so young style. Um, Wave, wave clouds like hands, right? So you step to the side, same thing, turn, right? Let your body turn, let your body turn, and then the leg can step in. But basically, one hand up, one hand down, right? This is cloud hands. Sun style, the palms remain like this. They just go up and down. Yang style, it might come out and might turn, right? So Yang style really gives you freedom of movement, and there's application in there. Um, I can't really talk about Chen style and and um, Wu style too much from there, except from what I've seen. But using the basis of this to um, play with energy, right? So if you take you take a not too wide, just not too wide, just outside your shoulder, and it's 
one hand up, one hand down, right? One hand up, one hand down, right? And you're shifting to one side. And like I said, let your body turn all the way and then shift to the other side and let your body turn all the way. So we're just doing one sow in place, just with the hands up and let your body turn and fold all the way. So you could step in place if you wanted to. Okay. That's a test. Are you folding all the way and releasing that leg? You could just step in place or you could walk. But for today, we want to just stay in place for this uh, exercise and exercise demonstration for yourself. So as you're moving back and forth, right? again, let your body turn. The first thing I want you to feel is um, like you're like you have a hose connecting both palms. So like a hydraulic hose, right? you, know, you just have a big hose connecting both palms. So if you pump if you press down on one, right, this, this hand is up, this hand is down. If you press on this, the other hand is going to rise. Okay, so turn, so pump one hand down, and the other hand will just start to rise. And turn, right, let your body fold, and pump. So that pumping pushes you over, you let your body turn, and it pushes that hand up. Okay? And you just have to relax, drop your shoulder, drop your elbow. It just Imagine you're just pumping, pumping water, pumping air through this tube. Relax the bottom of your feet, relax everything, just only pumping through this tube. And it's just that imagery, right, of pressing that air down and the other hand rises by itself. And let the body turn. Let the body turn and pump. Have that intent of pressing down. So imagine, you could imagine like you have a large syringe connected by a tube, right? And that piston, you're controlling that piston up and down. It doesn't take too long to, to, to experience that feeling. But it's never one thing, right? So one way is to pump, right? So the pressure is pumping, the other side will rise. So the opposite of that is to pull the syringe up and create a vacuum. Okay. So if we pull the syringe up and create a vacuum, then the other hand will fall. Okay. So you pull and draw that syringe up, then release, and then pull and draw that syringe up, and release on the turn, and pull and draw that syringe up, and release on the turn, and pull and draw. It's the same thing. It really doesn't take too long to kind of get that feeling and you're creating this suction coming out. Okay. So that's your E, that's your intent, and that's your muscles acting, right? You're making your muscles pull and draw or press and pump. Okay. So the next stage right, is Right, you're pulling, right? You're creating that pull, the hand falls, right? You're creating that pull, so the hand falls. But the next stage becomes something else drawing your hand up. So you start off with pulling, right? And drawing, and then slowly you start to imagine something else is pulling your hand up. Right? And then your whole body will lighten up. If something else is manipulating your hand, you just have to relax, right? Because something else is drawing your hand up and you just go with it. So the movement will become lighter and lighter because now you just follow and you just experience, right? It's creating that vacuum. If it's faster or slower, you just relax all the joints and let something else manipulate your palms. Right? If it's fast, you just have to let go. So at the top, it releases. And on that release, that's when you finish that nice turn. Right? You're turning, but as you release, you let your body fold. And it pulls and shift and turning, release and let your body turn. So same thing pumping down, right? right? First, you're pumping. Right? You're pumping the piston down. But then eventually, something else can be pressing your hand down. 
right? Something else can be pressing your hand down, right? That's, that's one way, right? From the top, something else is pressing your hand down and you just follow. Or, or something is pulling your hand down, right? So all different ways, different feelings, right? So if something's pulling and sucking my hand down, right? And you notice this, the other hand gets really light, right? It's hard to feel that big vacuum and that big pressure when that happens, right? And it just kind of sweeps. And just take your time, right? Something pulling your hand down, right? Something pulling your hand down, something pulling your hand down. <laughs> and it's an interesting game because which palm are you focusing on <laughs> from there? So I'm gonna leave that with you, right? So, so the I, again, right? You have to have your form, right? You have to kind of set your muscles into that form, right? Whatever that form is, and then expand the muscles, right? Allow for that expansion, but then externally something else is creating that energy and that force in you, so you just relax. And the last one again is um, the other one is allow your body to turn. Allow that fold to turn. So if you practice, 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 right? These folds can be really subtle. And you might just think like, oh, the, the person is just kind of shaking a little bit because they're moving fast. But it's that, that fold allowing that relaxing. Or you think they're only sinking down. But as they're sinking, they're actually folding before they can turn the other way. Yeah. But yeah, play with that. So one saw, the idea of one saw, but... Just playing with this movement where right? you just start from, if you only think up and down, if you only think one hand up, one hand down, it feels a little heavy, it feels a little mechanical, right? But then if you feel like, oh, pressing that down, right? then the flow starts coming out, pressing that hand down, the flow starts coming out, or drawing, pulling that piston up, right? It's a different kind of flow, pulling that piston up. Right? And then something else pulling my hand. Right? And then it really starts flowing. It's because something else is pulling my hand. It's like being blown in the wind or sucked, sucked through a suction tube. Right? And you just follow. Yeah. Or something pulling my hand down. Something pulling my hand down. It just changes the movement and changes the feeling. Bottom of the feet relaxed. Yeah. And then same thing, bottom feet can be relaxed or as you start getting one, you can imagine the bottom of the feet being pulled down or you can go through the same progression, right? Where you can imagine just heavy, 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 heavy legs like just pressing into the earth and then it gets pulled into the earth and sucked into the earth. Yeah. So like I said again, right? if you're, if you're holding if you're holding something, an object or a person, right, and you're both putting out energy, if something else is pulling on you, then it's also pulling through that object or person. So if she's trying to push, push out energy this way, but I imagine a, a cord or a cable coming through her body, right, attached to my hand, but it has to go through her body, and it's pulling that way, right, then my intent is sending the chi that way and pulling so that negates all of her energy. Right? So instead of only fighting her energy right at this point where it's all coming out, right? I'm dragging her energy throughout her, her whole body right? from there. So if I relax right? and I expand, right? so form first, expand, and then expand. Yeah, you're pressing against me and then something else pooling through her body and I can just relax. The more relaxed, right? The more relaxed, the less resistance against that energy pulling. Uh, so soon is everything. And then if I want to overtake, right? If I really want to push her, then I, I have to hold all of that, right? So I have to shuffle up a little bit, totally relax and imagine, right? I have to expand, but then let something else take over.
Yeah. So, win by losing <laughs> means no resistance and you have to study that. Yeah, it's not giving up. Right? It's not hiding. It just means you have to, we, we all have to learn how to relax and um, see the importance of that. Yeah, that's all our anxiety. So it translates to emotional, mental. Right? That's the biggest um, application. Right? Easy to do physical, right? Study physical, fighting, self-defense, whatever it is. But to apply that to mind, right? <laughs> fighting physically is an escape of dealing with our emo emotional, mental problems, right? <laughs> <laughs> right, fighting physically, going to the gym, working out hard, you know, helps you take out that aggression and that anxiety, but then the root of the problem still exists. So, not easy, not easy. I deal with that every day, but it's the, I, I cannot refute that the lesson is there. So it makes me realize, right, when I get anxious and I'm fighting, that's my, I'm doing it, right? It's not the other person. I'm doing it. No matter what they're doing to me, I'm doing it. And if I want to overcome that, then I, I have to change. I have to figure out how not to fight that at the point of impact, right? That point of impact, how not to fight that, how not to react like that. Yeah? And then when you get real strong, like the story of Yang Chen Fu is he's walking down the street with um, his student or somebody and, and somebody comes running up the street and they crash into Yang Chen Fu and he he's like oh what happened but the person bounced way out because he you know he the amount of practice he gives to that 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 stretching and that expansion yeah from there that when something came to him he relaxed and the body just automatically re did it by itself right it just triggered boom and he's like well what happened <laughs> <laughs> so the skill is there, the ability is there without realizing, right? it just intent, right? it's, it's already that, whoop. and that, that's what they call fajin, that's, that's a form of fajin, by the way, okay, all right, so anyway, that's a, that's a lot, yeah, shh, don't tell anybody this lesson, <laughs> all right, I'll say it again, yeah, I'm so behind on putting these videos out on YouTube, um, yeah, I, I need to get them all out because they've all got these little lessons hidden in them. All right, let's close up. So, one last time, gather. Yeah. Move the body around. Loosen up everything. And we'll end with the bell meditation. Oh, we sat through, we sat through two and a half plus hours of a dance recital yesterday to watch our granddaughter do a couple minutes. <laughs> All grandparents know what that's like. <laughs> I, I can enjoy the dance and I, I was, but oh, the second half I was starting to get a little tired and losing my focus, but I was trying to like, oh, clap. <laughs> But, and she came on in the middle of the first half. So maybe about 45 minutes she came on and then there was still another, um, well, first half was about hour 15, hour half. <laughs> then 15 minute intermission and then the second half. Like just slowly starting to lose my focus. <laughs> uh, had to resist, you know, mm, maybe I can work on my phone. <laughs> No, no, I'll leave it down, right? Because I, I performed and I performed and I taught and I know how irritating that is, right? To see people in the audience doing that. So I had to do a couple of checking, but put it away. Yeah. Okay. Extend the legs, relax. Just so they're touching the ground. Again, suspend the head and then just release it. Right? Press the legs and just release it. Drop the shoulder blades and just release it. Open the throat when you breathe. Relax the lower belly when you breathe. No resistance. Relax all the facial muscles. The forehead, around the nose, the jaws, the teeth. See that sun 
the sun in the sky, sending that energy down through the top of your head, feeding the sun in your chest, the sun in your heart, and smile, inner smile. Then you slowly open your eyes, rub your hands together. Warm up your eyes. Brush your scalp, just the fingertips, not the fingernails. Center to outside, front to back, three times. And then tap, same thing but tapping. Front to back, center to outside. You can slowly massage on the side of your neck and okay, drop your elbows, drop your arms. Just use your fingertips. Move your head back and forth and up and down. Try to get up into that occipital ridge right at the base of the skull. Try to loosen that up. Massage right. Right here, right here, you can feel that little divot. When you open your jaw, you can feel that little divot. Just gently massage and work your way down. Yeah. See what those muscles feel like. Right? And then you can take your knuckle, if you want, right? You can just kind of fold. And take your knuckle like this. Yeah, and just kind of gently scrape. You scrape the two sides and you can you can so you can use some lotion or if you like me there's enough oil on my face <laughs> and you can use your thumb from here and this is just slow scrapes and you try to go all the way out like you're just scraping all that's all that gunk out, all that stress and tension out, and then you can come underneath. So you can, so from here, you go straight down, and then under the jaw, and then across. That's the other way to stretch. So right, same place, right? Here you can feel that divot, but come straight down and go under, underneath the jaw. Yeah. And you can scrape that out. Yeah. So. And you can go both ways. So I gotta really work on that. I have 
I'm suffering TMJ, yeah? TMJ, G, J. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's fun if I try to eat things, right? Like, if, I, if for whatever reason I'm having, oh man, I want that, that double quarter pounder with cheese, fully stacked burger. There's no way I can get my mouth around it. Just to get my mouth around, even just a regular sandwich, it's like, because <laughs> I cannot open up this side all the way. It's not as bad as its worst point, but I, I'm trying to figure out how to release that. So, yes, yeah, scraping the TMG is all these muscles here, and especially underneath, yeah, scraping. And it's just a slow process, slow maintenance process, so you can warm it up. This is supposed to work too, right? Then where your fingertips are, you want to put your fingertips on those areas and just let it warm up. Or you could probably use um, your heating packs or something to help loosen up all these muscles that are locking the jaw together. Good. Yeah. I'm sorry, say that again. I know Mike always he bites his inner lip. Oh, you know, I do that from time to time. That, I, I don't know if this helps that. Um, I... You know, I suspect, I've never researched it, but I suspect it's, you know, it happens certain times. So I'm thinking there must be like inflammation, yeah, where the cheeks and things must expand inwards. I mean, I've had times where I, I don't know how you do it, but right under the tongue, huh? that webbing over there where I've bitten under there, like how do I bite? Yeah, how do I bite under the tongue? But yeah, I'll bite, I'll definitely, I'll bite inside the cheek. Um, yeah, diff certain places you tend to bite. It's like, I think it's tension, um, yeah, right? Not being relaxed, so the jaws, the jaw gets out of line, and then we rush, right? We rush when we eat, um, right? Catching the tongue, parts of the tongue sometimes, the edges. Yeah, I... This, so yeah, this might help. All these things might help you to relax this muscle because it's, like I said, I suspect it kind of gets, it's probably inflaming and it's getting puffy. Yeah, so I, if you're talking about the inside right around here where he bites, yeah, I know that. I, I do that every so often and it's like, what what's going on, right? What's going on? I don't know. I guess the cheeks get fat or something. <laughs> Stress, but inflammation, yeah. Um, turmeric, turmeric in the diet might might help. And I think all supplements, you go on it, you have to go off for a little while, right? Your yeah, um, vitamins, supplements, medicines, your body gets uh, used to it, yeah? So you go off it for a little while and then you come back on and then feel like, oh, is there a kick? Or you really didn't need it, right? It really didn't do anything for you, kind of thing, but, you know. I don't know, maybe drinking cold water before we eat, shrink it down. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you know, I, honestly, I've, I've never researched it. But now, now you're making me think I want to research uh, what causes us. I, we can just Google it, right? What causes us to bite the inside of our mouth, bite our tongue while we're eating, right? Those things. But, but yeah, I have bitten underneath my tongue that webbing. It's really strange. Like, how does that happen? What am I doing? Yeah. Yeah. Can't figure out that one there. Okay. <laughs> okay, that's the hands up. Let uh, everything stretch. Uh, and down. Okay, right hand, left hand. Uh, oh, let me show you my rod.